Around the time of Fallout 76's announcement, I distinctly remember an encounter I had at a GameStop with a kid and his friend. They couldn't be any older than possibly 16. The kid was excitedly telling his friend about Fallout 76, finally perfecting the Fallout formula, and the best part is, it's now co-op. As someone who is let down by Fallout 4 and actively annoyed at Fallout 76's bizarre pride in further pursuing a more open-world shooter vibe instead of a role-playing RPG vibe, this kid rubbed me the wrong way. I chuckled to myself and the kid noticed and asked why I'm not excited about Fallout 76. It's Fallout and Fallout is awesome. And I flatly told him no, I wasn't excited about Fallout 76 and I felt that it was abandoning Fallout's roots and that Bethesda seems to not really understand or does understand and doesn't like what makes a Fallout game special. And they'd rather Fallout be a different kind of game. The kid then told me that he's been a fan since Fallout 4 and that the older games were just boring and he prefers Bethesda's new take on Fallout. Then, over the speaker, the audio for the Fallout 76 trailer began playing. The kid instantly cut my response off and with a big grin on his face, quieted down to get a better listen to the jingle that accompanies Bethesda's Fallout ads. The kid went back to talking to his friend and the two of them left the store with a new Fallout 76 pre-order and a Vault Boy statue. The reason that experience annoyed me so much to the point that I still remember it in vivid detail wasn't necessarily because of the kid. He can certainly like what he likes. I remember being young and feeling really passionate about things. It was more so that this kid was more in love with the branding elements of Fallout than the soul of Fallout in the same way that Bethesda is. You can see it with how Bethesda, not understanding the satirical nature of Vault Boy's soulless eyes as he smiles in fictional in-game adverts, uses him unironically as a marketing mascot to pitch players the poorly timed and inappropriate Fallout First membership. Bethesda is using Vault Boy in the exact way that Vault Boy was designed in Fallout 1 to parody company mascots. Seeing Vault Boy give his thumbs up in the adverts for Fallout First genuinely makes my skin crawl because of how tone deaf it is. I've honestly begun to hate Vault Boy as a little character. He was once a parody of corporate mascots, and now he literally is one. He's annoying, he's irritating, he represents Bethesda's greed and disregard for their fan base. Their latest game, Fallout 76, takes the gameplay module from Fallout 4, surgically removes it from the game, and then transplants it onto a new map. And then their rather stiff and dated engine was gutted and reworked to allow for multiplayer and better lighting. Well, better lighting. The game was a notorious disaster at release. Most live service games release criminally undercooked and then usually recover within seven months or so by adding content with the game that it probably needed at launch. Fallout 76 is the instance of a live service game never really recovering. It is still to this day as broken as the day it shipped. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Enemies will spawn in the air or in the ground AI is at the same time unresponsive and clearly being held together with the same duct tape that barely keeps the in-game servers running. The frame rates are a sight to behold with how wildly inconsistent they are, and the new lighting engine seems incapable of making indoor locations look remotely convincing. All of these things being brought down further by a subtle feeling that the game server is maybe half a second behind you, the player. Enemies noticeably have a slightly delayed reaction to your bullets, a delay that isn't there in Fallout 4. And most things in the game world need a bit of time before reacting to your player inputs. It's there, it's subtle, but it's enough to where you feel like the game is slightly unresponsive when compared to Fallout 4. All of this, and Bethesda then uses Vault Boy to suggest that I buy Fallout first and visit the Atomic Microtransactions shop every time I log on. 
Bethesda has been gaslighting their community lately and adding gameplay-altering microtransactions with a shallow smile and a statement that we only did it because the fans wanted us to, which I personally think is very cold and slimy. I hate Fallout 76. I hate what it represents as a sign of Bethesda's vision for the future. I hate what it represents in Bethesda's lack of concern over pushing the limits of their fans, and I hate what it says about the state of modern gaming. So why have I played it? And why does it have a community? The reason I bought it this summer was actually curiosity, but why did I not mind playing it for this video despite the clear issues? You see, the Fallout 76 does have something truly great, something that I do suspect is why it has a small but loyal community, an element that certainly contributed to me stomaching 40 hours of gameplay for this video. Fallout 76 is probably one of the best communities of any online game that I've ever played. After the Fallout First subscription announcement, I took to the Fallout 76 subreddit and asked an honest question. Why do you all play this game? Surely, other similar games exist that are higher in quality. In a genuine way, I wanted to poke inside the individual player's head and find out why he or she personally played this game. I didn't want them to defend themselves or try to rationalize why they liked it. If they liked this game, I wanted to honestly know why. I'd like to summarize some of the responses that I got. Roughly a quarter of the responses were from older folk who wanted a familiar hamster wheel type game that they could just use to unwind after a long day of work. And this is a refreshingly honest and really relatable justification. I do appreciate the honesty in that you know, nothing I do will matter because the game will go indefinitely, but I just needed something to play with my brain switched off. Some of us enjoy familiarity. I've grown up with the Halo franchise personally, so I played and found value in every single game in the franchise, including the trash that casual audiences wouldn't ever touch unless they were a fan in the first place. A casual player may play 76 and go, what kind of a joke is this? before shutting off the game, never having a single emotion besides repulsion and regret at such a bad purchase. A long-time Fallout fan, though, who has been around since the original games, or at least Fallout 3, may find enjoyment in a new location and the bizarre reality of being able to see another Fallout fan in the same world as you. This familiarity is then complemented by the Fallout 4 combat module of constant degradation and replenishment. Every aspect of Fallout 76 is collapsing. Your hunger and your thirst meter are always reaching critical. Your guns are always whittling down in quality. Your camp could always use some repair work on walls or turrets whenever a curious ghoul throws its body at it. You're constantly looking after yourself, searching desks and suitcases for gear and scrap, looting shelves and cabinets for clipboards and duct tape, pillaging restaurants and kitchens for food and drink, all to respawn a few minutes after you leave the now deserted location, ready for another player to stumble in and frantically search for the materials they need. Bethesda took Fallout 4's gameplay loop and made it never-ending here. The shelves are always stocked because the player is always running out of resources and needs an endless supply of stuff to stock up their endlessly declining resources, and so on and so on. You get a hamster wheel. That could seem draining to some. And it certainly wore me out a lot during my playthrough, but to a Fallout fan who wants a shallow excuse to just play Fallout after a long day's work, there's a comfort in knowing that there's an online Fallout game that will keep going indefinitely. It's not a good game, but it's the only Fallout game that provides this specific experience to fans right now. And I can certainly confirm that there is a comfort to be found in parts. I listen to a lot of podcasts personally. Some days when I knew I needed to play the game for research, hours would pass without me noticing, just listening to my podcasts as the game acted as sort of a recreational background activity. Huge game-breaking issues would instantly break the trance I'd fall into, and I would just roll my eyes while making a tally mark in my notebook to signify another bug I ran into. But when the game did trap me in a pleasant trance, that's when I felt I understood the value Fallout 76 fans do find in the predictable busy work that they know will always be waiting for them. This isn't to compliment Bethesda, 
The parts of it that do work are the modules and systems that it lifts from Fallout 4 and the community itself. There's a sort of mutual camaraderie in the way that players assist each other in-game, provide new players with large amounts of materials for crafting and survival, and even offer to help speed through the story, even if it means they aren't able to accomplish a goal of their own. My first experience with player interaction was when a very friendly guy killed me and looted my things because I acquired a bounty. I returned to my body, turned on my mic, and asked him how he was able to kill me. Realizing that I was new and didn't understand the mechanics, he dropped everything he looted from me, and then helpfully explained to me the bounty system. He then spent an hour of his time helping me with quests and power leveling me through the story. He told me that most players will happily drop what they're doing to assist each other, because we are all in this awful situation together, so we might as well do the heavy lifting and make the game fun since Bethesda clearly can't do that themselves. I appreciated my time with that guy, and I took his advice seriously. From that day forward, I'd always try to make sure to assist players I saw. I'd offer a friendly wave from a distance if I was approaching someone and didn't want to appear hostile. Another interaction of mine is when I saw a newer player running around looking a bit lost, so I turned on my mic and asked if he might need some help. He said his quest required him to craft something at a tinkerer's workbench and couldn't find one, so I showed him one that I found a bit earlier. During the trip to its location, we chatted about Fallout, Halo Reach coming to Steam, EA bringing Jedi Fallen Order to Steam, and then when we arrived at that workbench, he thanked me for the assist and we parted ways. In the Reddit post that I made, this is almost a universally agreed upon sentiment. Fallout 76's community is incredibly helpful and usually in agreement that they do deserve better. But it won't stop them from enjoying the stories that they form and the friends they genuinely make in this game. A little less than a month ago, someone on the Fallout 76 subreddit announced that they were getting married to someone that they regularly played the game with. She and her soon-to-be husband bonded in this broken apocalypse, and it was a genuinely wholesome story, and I hope their marriage is a happy one. Fallout 76 is a game that survives in spite of Bethesda, not because of them. Fallout 76's community is what drives this game. They are what keeps the current player base playing, and that's something I understand completely. I hate Fallout 76, but I didn't hate my time with its community. Thank you.